more shocked than anything, you know what I'm saying? But I wasn't more shocked than him dying. The Japanese government didn't tell the people for three months that there had been three meltdowns. And that's what your government does. They didn't tell you about Three Mile Island, remember, for a long time. And I remember the man in charge of Three Mile Island stood up and said, yes, we have it under control, and yes, we know what we're doing. And he didn't. Tetco is, a, is the Tokyo Electric Power Company. Um, it was going to evacuate the workers because they were all in incredible danger. And Naoto Khan rushed to the reactor and said, you are not evacuating the workers, because had they evacuated the workers, the whole thing would have just blown, everything. Because eventually they worked out, they, were, they had to put seawater in to cool the reactor, but TEPCO didn't want to do that because seawater damages the reactor forever and then you don't have a nuclear power plant. And they didn't want to put seawater in, but in fact, they did put seawater in. So Naoto Khan prevented um, the evacuation of the workers and kind of saved Japan. When you are exposed to very high levels of radiation, the actively dividing cells of the body die. Hair, so it falls out and you become bald. You know when patients have cancer and they're treated with chemo and they become bald, same thing. Um, and the gut cells are very um, active and they die, so you develop awful nausea and, and ulcers in the, in the rectum and the colon, you get terrible bloody diarrhea. And then the blood cells die in the bone marrow. The white blood cells, kind of like AIDS, so you can't fight infection. Um, and the platelets die, so you can't control clotting, so you bleed, preliminary orifice, and bleed under the skin. And we first saw this after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was never described in the medical literature. Acute radiation sickness. The terrorists who flew into the World Trade Towers had targeted the two Indian point reactors 35 miles from Manhattan. They didn't go into them because they thought they were protected by missiles, which they're not. Yeah. None of them are protected from airplanes yeah. flying into them. If that had happened, that would have been the end of the financial capital of the world. Because can you imagine trying to evacuate from New York? The tunnels all blocked, the bridges all blocked. I mean, random chaos. And and what I'm I've been talking about this for so long, and the nuclear industry say, you know, chance of a meltdown is like being hit by a bolt of lightning in a parking lot, you know? Well, we've had three meltdowns since I've been talking. But, and then, even if we don't have a meltdown, massive quantities, oh, I want to talk about plutonium, of radioactive waste. You've got over 64,000 tonnes of this stuff. Very radioactive, stored at your reactors or on the roofs of the reactors. And so if there are accidents and stuff and this stuff gets released, I mean, where are you going to put the stuff? Well, you can't put it in Yucca Mountain because Harry Reid doesn't want it there. Where are you going to put it? There's no, and the EPA says it must be stored, isolated from the ecosphere for a million years. Can you tell us about some of the consequences of radioactive exposure? Well, any radiation exposure increases your risk of getting cancer. Each dose you get is cumulative. You must never have any unnecessary x-ray. You must not have your teeth x-rayed every year. It's totally unnecessary. And it's cumulative. Each dose you get adds to the risk of getting cancer. Young people are particularly sensitive to radiation. Um, and what I didn't say in my lecture was children uh, under the age of five who live within about two miles of a nuclear power plant like San Onofre have double the risk of getting leukaemia and they have a higher than normal incidence of solid cancers. That's been shown at 16 reactors in Germany and also in France. So it's dangerous even to live near a nuclear power plant because it's always emitting radioactive elements into the air and water. How many nuclear reactors are there in America? 103 operating, 104. So what is the risk of a nuclear disaster to America? Very, very, very high. It's not if but when, and San Onofre, if they start that up again, I tell you, sitting on a, a time bomb. Nuclear power constitutes 20% of the uh, electricity within the United yeah. States. How is it possible to replace that energy? You can save 28% of the electricity you currently use by turning off your lights and, and being careful, number one and not have your houses heated to glory in, this, in the winter and cool to refrigerator level in the summer. Um, you should have solar panels on every single house in America. 
there's enough wind west of the Mississippi to supply three times the electricity America currently needs. Geothermal, I mean, the answers are all there. China's way ahead of you. Why are you so pathetic? You used to be pathetic, but you are now. Is there any way to limit exposure to radioactive fallout? No. <coughs> you heard it here, Dr. Helen Caldicott. Let's get rid of the reactors. The moves we're making, they try to search for peace by going to war. It don't make sense like trying to play oil and water in a bubbling nation. By the moves we're making, they try to search for peace by going to war. It don't make sense like trying to play oil and water in a